bridging scoundrels. On the 15th of August this year, India will be observing its 74th Independence Day. Independence from British imperialism, independence from British rule, and what it means in this day and age. We are in the midst of the worst pandemic and perhaps the worst humanitarian disaster that India has faced in, it, in recent memory. We saw the scenes of impoverished migrant workers of the poor crawling on the streets, struggling to drink milk spilled on the ground to survive, taking perilous journeys on foot to reach their homes, a government that is so brazenly in favor of the rich and wealthy that it could not even provide public transportation to migrant workers, a government which is so brazen in its power that it has peddled and quite shamelessly peddled the complete falsehoods and hack treatments for COVID that is entirely callous. We have come to this position now after 74 years of the struggle that rid us of British imperialism, yet the average person still suffers. The Indian worker still suffers being trampled under the boots of Indian capitalists. Bhagat Singh had warned us that it would not be real independence if we were to drive out the white masters and replace them with brown capitalists. Yet, that is exactly what has happened. We have come to a junction where just 10% of the population in this country of 1.3 billion people, just 10% owns 73% of the wealth. In the last year alone, and this is from an Oxfam study, 1% of the Indian of India's population earned 73% of all wealth created that year. 119 billionaires decide the fate of, of this country, of the future of this country. This level of inequality has not been seen since the British Raj. We have replicated the society of the British Raj in 21st century India. And we need to ask ourselves how and why we have come to this position. We must understand what independence was and the stories that we've been told in history classes through television and movies. The reality of Indian independence was this. This was one of the great victories of the world working class. This was one of the revolutionary victories of the world working class that destroyed the largest empire on earth and started a process of decolonization across Asia and Africa. It was not the first to be decolonized. The Vietnamese had revolted two years prior to India's independence, but India was the centerpiece, the keystone of imperialist colonialism in, in, in all of Asia. When India was free, that fire raged through the entire colonized world and served as an inspiration, a focal point. It broke the backs of imperialism. This was not achieved by individual decisions made by great people in committees. This was achieved by the workers and the masses of peasants and students and youths marching on the streets and struggling. The decisive moment of Indian independence shows us this. In 1945, when the INA trials happened, the city of Calcutta was completely taken over by the people, by students who revolted against British rule. The very next year in 1946, when naval ratings of the Royal Indian Navy mutinied, they were joined by the workers of Bombay's textile mills, organized and led by revolutionaries of the BLPI. It was this mass action of workers and peasants everywhere 
this is what drove the final nail into the coffin of British imperialism. This is how Indian independence was won. And there were benefits, yes. As long as the bourgeoisie felt threatened by the Indian working class, they would concede. After independence came land reforms, the establishment of a robust public sector, benefits of which we are still seeing and which acts as a shield against the worst of capitalist crisis, our public sector banks and our nationalized industry, which this government and even the one previous to it tried so hard to destroy and sell out. And that is still being systematically undermined every single day. When we think of Indian independence, it is not simply the formal handing over of power from the British Empire to the Indian Republic. There is something deeper, a social struggle, which has to be understood. And when we understand this, we even understand the story of the trail that went in, by which the Indian bourgeoisie had to crush this aspiration of the Indian people, the aspiration for true liberation from capitalism not just the half liberation where one master is replaced by another. The Indian bourgeoisie may go to the moon. They may become a great power in their own right. None of it will change the reality facing the working class on the streets who have to, who have to crawl on the streets to survive. Images will remain etched into our consciousness and we must understand where the rot in our society lies. India suffers from capitalism today. Our second liberation must come as a liberation from capitalism. Lal Salam.